All right, everybody, welcome to quarantine workout number 26. That's right, it's number 26, so I don't know why I did that. I guess I'm just excited that it's quarantine workout number 26. So here we go with a general warm-up. Nothing too exciting about the way we're going to start this one off. You've got your general warm-up as you normally would. Uh, feels good to swing the arms around. And then you're going to go into your 10 and 10. This time, though, for the 10 and 10, you're going to go four walkouts with one push-up, three walkouts with two, two walkouts with three, and then one walkout with four. And if you'd like to do any types of variations, you're welcome to. Uh, just to give you an example, you can do something like, you could do a Uhimata push-up, you could do a uh, Plyo push-up, you could do an Archer push-up, you could do something a little more exotic like a Scorpion push-up, you could do anything you like, really. Just make sure that you hit those numbers, other than that, have at it. Once you finish that, you got your basic corrective squats. And although they are basic, they're kind of basic like the force. You know, they're just there all the time, trying to keep you centered, trying to keep you focused, trying to keep your form correct. So make sure you do those correctly. And hey, corrective squats, correct is part of the name. You got one, two, three, four. I see a lot of people taking liberties with the technique here, doing things like this. They think, one and two, well, maybe that's just one step and they do something like this. Well, you didn't really do it, did you? Because that one, stretch out the hamstrings, posterior, drop the hips, that slackens this out, stretches out your quads. Reach up, set your posture, come up. Make sure you're keeping your feet on the ground, plant it. Outside, inside, back and front. Equal points of contact. The way I like to think about it, it's as if your foot was connected to the floor, with magnets. So keep that strong connection to the ground. Gravity is there trying to hold you down to the earth. Let it do its job. Give gravity some surface area there. All right, keep your feet flat on the ground, equal contact, 360 degrees around your feet. Once you finish up with your warm up, which, like I said, simple, but uh, still detailed, then you're gonna go into your first circuit. First circuit, we're gonna go through this three times. We're gonna start with sharks, short arc rotator cuff series. So we've added that, uh, that ISO cuff series into our training, and I really like that, but this is the dynamic version. So that ISO cuff, you're working all the same muscles, all the same angles, but it's just an isometric contraction. This is dynamic, so what you're gonna be doing is moving, right? Don't forget your range of motion. You always wanna be, for this, it's 15 degrees, 15 degrees. For uh, this one here, it's gonna be 15 degrees. 15 degrees, of course your, your uh, external rotation is going to be 15 as well. Then you're going to go 5 degrees, 25 degrees. Same thing going this way, right? 25 degrees out, 5 degrees back. Okay, And then you'll finish with your symmetrical movements. You've got your reverse fly, keep the elbows tucked in at the side, shoulders down, open up, squeeze your blades together, and then your uh, goal post should be as if you're the Scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz, uh, elbows, shoulders on the same line, rotate back and pull. Keep the shoulders down. Think about pulling the shoulder blades down there. Everything there, you're going to go for 20 reps on the first round, 16 reps on the second round, 12 reps on the third round. And as the rep, stop, the rep count starts to come down, make sure you're bringing up the resistance accordingly. Okay. Once you finish the sharks, you're going to grab your med ball. Got backstroke roll. This has to be one of my favorite moves, not just because I'm a backstroker, but uh, because I really enjoy the kind of stability you get. So plant that foot, other hand is up, reach back. Remember, it's backstroke, right? Think about your backstroke. Rotate, use, just like in backstroke, there's a lesson here. Aaron Pearsall, if you're listening, there's a lesson here. I know you know this already. When you push that foot down, and you move your hip. You're using your leg to move the hip and the shoulders are connected to the hip through the core. So you gotta keep your core rigid. Press, reach, bring that leg across. And then rotate, this is a balancing act here. Keep your eye on the ball, push with the foot to come back. Just like when you're actually swimming, you're using the foot to provide the leverage to rotate the hip and the shoulder. All right, so once you got that going, the rest is just a balancing act. And you move through your full range of motion, Staying good, stable, 
and control. You're gonna go that for 15 reps. Once you finish those, you're gonna come up to standing and we got 10 reps on each side windmill. Windmill is a similar type of move, but it's a different range of motion. So I'm gonna be up overhead, back of the hand to the thigh. I'm going to lean, that's hips back. Just like the first move is always like you're going to sit down on chair, right? So I'm standing here, I wanna sit down on this stool, I sit down, right? The hips go back, my weight moves back, but then I sit down. Okay, if I'm doing this windmill, I'm in the same situation, my hips go back, but now I'm leaning. So the fact that my chest moves forward, that keeps me balanced. When I wanna sit down on something, I keep my chest over my hips, and my weight moves back until it settles on the stool or the chair or whatever. But when I'm doing this move and I'm thinking about keeping my center of mass balanced, not balanced on a stool, but balanced over my feet, hips go back, chest goes forwards. Now the hips are back, the chest are forward. This is balanced. My weight is still over my feet. So I lean, eyes are up, looking at the hand, bring it down and back up. When I do this with the ball, it looks like this. And remember, this is a balancing act. So you go smooth and control. If the ball moves, slow down, regain control. From the front, you're gonna see that hip moves back, shoulders are gonna rotate, my fingertips go all the way to the ground, and I'm thinking about keeping this ball balanced right over my shoulder there, okay? I'm gonna go this for 10 on each side. After you finish that, you got pentagram lunges. For the pentagram lunge, as you probably recall, you're going to step forward, opposite arm goes forward, step 45 degrees out, hips stay forward, then you're gonna step out laterally. Your foot should pivot up, heel to the ground, foot flat, and get into that pocket. That means your femur should be horizontal. Back up, then you're gonna step out 45 degrees to the back, hips stay facing forwards, that means that this angle is changing, right? It's about the hip that's moving. You shouldn't have your hand on your knee. I don't know why I was doing that. Come back up, then step straight back, back to center. So the first round, you're gonna do that twice. Second round, you go three times. Third round, you go four times, right? You go through, as I said, three rounds of that circuit. Have fun. Okay, so once you finish up with circuit number one, naturally you're gonna go through circuit number two. And by the way, I noticed there was like a bunch of string stuck to my leg when I was demonstrating circuit number one. Why didn't you say something? I found it, I took care of it, so don't worry about it, but God, next time, at least be a bro and tell me, all right? Uh, circuit number two, we're gonna go through this six rounds. We're gonna start with core 360. So let's go over that. Every time I've demonstrated this so far, I've been too close to the wall and I've hit the wall every time. Let's see if I can finally learn from my mistakes. So we're gonna go 15 reps. And I am actually a very good distance from the wall this time. So this is a lot more what it should look like. This is extremely difficult for me. And what you wanna focus on here is keeping your lower abs engaged. And what your lower abs are working to do is to grab and pull your hips underneath and keep your spine straight. If your lower abs start to disengage, your hips are gonna tilt, your spine is gonna bend, and you're gonna to start to feel this in your lower back. The way that you counteract that is by using the abs to rotate your hips underneath your body, keep your spine straight, and engage the core on the way back. And if you're staying engaged on the way back, when you find your maximum distance, and that's the distance where just the leverage is more than your abs can handle, then you come back, right? You go back as far as you can, and then you come back to your neutral position. But you have to be in position already. If you're going backwards thinking that you're gonna set your position once it gets difficult, you've already set yourself up to fail. So make sure that you are already engaged keeping your hips tilted underneath, keeping your spine straight. And if you need a reminder as to what that feels like, lay down on your back, slip your fingers underneath your lower spine and press down and crush your fingers there. And if you can feel that, then you can feel exactly the kind of contraction that you need 
when you're doing this move. From there, you're gonna go the GSP, gymnastic side plank, dips, 15 here, top leg is forward, feet are shoulder width, arm is up, nice and stacked, find the ground, this is your neutral position. Don't hang out down here. This is not a leisurely relaxation. You're not, you're not posing for, a, for an artist who's going to sketch you from charcoal or uh, oil pastels. You're gonna be uh, doing some exercise here. So don't hang out on the ground like you're a classical painting. Get yourself up, get yourself structural. 15 reps on each side. Then move on to your back. Remember, feet are plantar flexed here, all right? I don't want to stick my foot all the way through here, through the heel. I want to keep my foot pointed. I want the strap to be right underneath the ball of the foot. The only way that I'm going to stay engaged in this TRX is if I'm plantar flexing and keeping pressure. That means, again, I can't relax when I'm on the ground. If I do, my foot is going to slip out. i got to point my toes and keep pressure on the feet not the hips. Plant yourself in your race start recovery position. Press the hips up, squeeze, release. I see a lot of people when they do this, the feet flare apart. Keep your feet together. Press down, find the ground, but don't set your weight on your hips. You really want to feel strong when you're doing these moves. Otherwise, they're kind of a waste of time. All right, so make sure you're getting something out of this. After that, you're going to stand up, and you've got overhead tricep extensions. You can use the, uh, the bed sheet combo for this. That's cool. And uh, remember, elbows up overhead. Keep the body straight. You don't want to start getting into this position. I see some people, they do this move, and their hips stay in the same position. Looks something like this. This, I mean, I feel like I'm getting just about as much exercise out of that as I am when I wave goodbye to my mom, right? It's, it's nice, you wanna wave goodbye to mom, but it's definitely not exercise. Keep the elbows up overhead, bring the hands back behind the head, keep your core engaged, and drive up and forwards. Make your body move, the hips. Should move. And if that's too much resistance, walk out away. The further vertical you are at the beginning of the move, the easier it's going to be. But I'm still getting more out of this than I am if I'm standing way back here doing something like that. Okay? From there, we've got, uh, and that's going to be 12 reps. From there, we've got single arm bicep curls. This is going to be 10 on each side. Excuse me, it's going to be 8 on each side. And remember this one? I'm going to lean back into it with my feet pointed forwards. I'm going to reach, and then I'm going to rotate. This is the first part of the move. I rotate so that my, my shoulders are in line here, and then I rotate 90 degrees before I pull. Once I do, here, I'm going to open back up. And I want to keep my elbow pointed up. Again, just like most TRX moves, the further away from the point of connection I step, the easier that it's going to be. Once I finish that single arm bicep curl, eight on each side, I have an X carry. X carry with a med ball and a kettlebell or a, use a bug out bag for this too. Let's use that bag. I'm going to get that med ball up overhead and then pick up the bag. I'm going to walk 40 steps this way. And if I'm walking backwards, remember, I'm only counting the forward steps. After that, I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to walk 40 steps with the uh, other side, okay? So it's 40 with one arm overhead, other arms at the side, and then 40 more steps inverted, okay? After that, last thing I got, cobra push-ups. So remember this one also referred to as yoga push-ups. I'm gonna start in this downward dog position, and I'm gonna move as if I were going underneath the fence. Then low, press up, and only my toes and hands are touching right now. And then I shift back. I really like to work these with the breath, so it's gonna be in, 
In, and then exhale. In, out, in, out. And there you go. You go through that a total of six times, and you're good to go. Have fun.